There's one more thing left and God take me to a cave and I can find it. Let's get that still small voice. That's something that puts a cream in the life. That's something that though you speak with tongues of men and angels and have not that, you're nothing. Though you can prophesy and speak with tongues and show signs and wonders and work miracles and do great signs, but if that little still small voice is in there, you're nothing, says the scripture. That's what we're listening for now. We've had the thunders. We've had the fire. We've had the rushing winds and the earthquakes. But God send us a still small voice. That's what we need. Listen, brother. We need that still small voice. A still small voice that spoke. Jesus said you couldn't hear his voice in the street. You didn't hear him crying. He was our pattern. Look at him. He was compared his spirit like a dove, gentle. It's great things are quite things. Did you know that, friends? Listen. The sun which gives life on the earth to every living thing, and botany life, plant life, tree life, whatever more, it brings forth life, the sun does, and it can draw a million gallons of water from the earth and make less noise and we can get a bucket full out of a pump. It's big things. Quiet things are big things. Did you ever hear the world turning? Did you ever hear the planets as they pass through the orbits? Do you ever hear one? That's the big things. Did you ever hear the sunrise? Oh, we think we have to have a lot of noise. Have to have a brass band to beat. A lot of jumping up and down and we ain't got a good meeting. We think everybody has to be on top of the clapping their hands and things. We think the music has to be going in a rhythm and everybody running down the aisle. We've had that. What good's it done? Where's it at? Where's it got us today? In a bunch of confusion, a bunch of denominations, broke up, brotherhood ruined. Certainly it has. It's been the old canker worm and palm worm and. And all kinds of bugs from back there in the beginning of Job saw, or Joel saw them. What the palm worm has left the canker worm eating, what the canker worm eat, the grasshopper eating, and so forth, do we eat it down to a stump? But the scripture says, I will restore, saith the Lord. We're waiting for something. Of all the shouting, we've had enough blast and noise to, to convert the whole world. We've had enough hoorah and hollering and carrying on to what's it done? It hasn't built the church. It's built denominations. It's made man go out with puffed up ideas and stuffed shirts. I don't like that stuff. Walk out on the platform and say, oh, look at him. He's a prince. Look how he's dressed, just polished and everything. He knows how to make his vows and so forth. That ain't what God chooses. A prophet thought that one day he's going to anoint a servant. He said, he's the biggest of the family. He'll look right. But God refused him. We don't have to have princes and, and so forth to stand up there like I don't know what. It ain't the clothes you wear or the eloquence you speak with. It's the something that's inside of you. That hey, voice of God. Help us, Lord. That's what it is. The prophet passed by another one and said, that's not him. God's refused him. Pastor said, haven't you got another? So we got a little ruddy one back here on the hillside herding the sheep. It's David. When they brought this little red-headed, freckle-faced guy across there and his little stooped in shoulders and sheepskin wrapped around him. God said, that's him. Amen. Now, all your big statues and stuffed shirts didn't go with God. You might be DDD, PhD, or double LD. You might be Bishop Pope or whatever you might be, but it takes God to make something out of nothing. Amen. As long as you can be the nothing, God's the something. Amen. As long as you can get yourself out of the way, then God can come in. But when you're so stuffed up and starchy, you got the biggest and the best. You haven't got nothing that you ought to have. That's a humble heart before God. We know that, brethren. 
Certainly. Sure, you never did see or hear the sunrise. You never did hear that. Did you ever go out at night to hear the dew fall? What would we do without it? See, it don't take that. Now, I'll tell you one thing now. It's the still, it isn't the rippling waters that makes such a big noise and jumps up and down that reflects the beauty of the stars in it. It's a small pool that's deep and still that reflects the beauty of the stars. What we need tonight is that deep, rich experience. That's something down in us that it don't have to shout, yet it might. But we put all emphasis on our shouting. It might never speak with tongues, yet it might. But we put all emphasis on that. And it might not have attended Billy Graham's meeting or Robert's meeting or my meeting. You don't have to. What it has to have is that depths of God's eternal love. Amen. That spirit on the inside of him. That makes you what you are. That's what I was speaking about this morning. That's what I was pulling the church across Calvary back and forth. Don't you think because that you've spoke with tongues or that you know so much about the scriptures or you read somebody's books and you know more than the other fella? He said, put a mark on those that sigh and cry for the abominations that's been in the city. Who would he mark in our cities tonight? See, it's the depths of the spirit, not the shallowness. It's not the shell on the on the hickory nut that's good. It's the hickory nut under the shell. You got a big empty shell. You got nothing under there. What we need tonight is the depths of God's love. And when Elijah heard that still small voice, nothing bothered him. What have you heard in all of it? You'll be going in a few days. You heard Billy Graham. You'll hear Oral Roberts. You'll hear others. Great man. Nothing against those men. They're God's servants. But don't listen to the noise. Hear that still small voice. That depths of something that comes into the human heart that takes all foolishness away from you. It takes all the world away from you. It makes you hate the things of the world and love the things of God. That's the depths, that's the pool that reflects the stars of God's eternal glory. That's the thing that brings forth tears to the eyes. Brings joy unspeakable and full of glory. It makes you stand when all other things will fail you. It makes it when the sickness comes or even death itself, it's still got the reflection of God's blessings in it. That little pool that's deep. And reflects the heavens, not the ripple and noise of the water. Riffling waters are not very deep. It's still waters that runs deep. 